Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senior Vice President and General Manager, Software and Services Group, Doug Fisher. Good morning. Good morning. All right, because we're going to light it up today. Yeah, no, we're not in Colorado. We're not going to light it up like that. So, <laughs> so uh, today I'm going to talk about lighting up the power of the software-defined in infrastructure. But before I jump there, I want to talk about what else we lit up this morning. How many of those uh, did the run this morning, 5K run? Yeah, good job. Uh, I had no intention or even understood that it was happening until last night, and uh, Cormier threw the gauntlet down and said, I'm going to take you. I don't think that was the words he used, something about kicking something. Um, so I showed up this morning to race Cormier. Now, he was bragging about how good he was and how his time was going to be so much better than mine and all this stuff going on. Um, the race went on. I ended up running with Whitehurst, and about uh, probably about 6K into the 5K run, <laughs> he turns and says, guys, I got Google Maps, and we're lost. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I said, well, I still need to know if I, I beat Cormier. So, so uh, we got, got a photo of the race, and um, using you know, Hadoop and data analytics and facial recognition software, we figured out where each of us were. And so there's me right there raising my hand in victory, yeah. And we found Paul just at the curvature of the earth. Uh, so. Where is Paul? You took a risk, put me up here, you know that. All right, so let's get going. So imagine, imagine a data center that can respond to the velocity of business, to the rate of change, to that speed of innovation that we're seeing today. And then imagine the business you can derive on the digital service economy. That's really what it's about. And in order to derive that, you need to have an infrastructure that can fully take advantage of that opportunity. At Intel, we look at four vectors of innovation around ensuring that you have the best competitive advantage of capturing some of that value. The first thing we do is deliver an optimized roadmap around various workloads. Our roadmap is deep. We have uh, low, uh, low power, cost-effective compute, all the way up to the highest performing compute capabilities, a deep roadmap to address the various workloads you'll deploy in the data center. That's our job to keep innovating around our platform silicon to ensure that we give the best opportunity for you to compete. We work with the leaders in the industry to help define standard approaches to modernizing the data center taking advantage of dynamic resource pooling, ensuring that you're getting the best efficiency out of your data center. And then we ensure that we work with the analytics, the thing that you need to extract that business value. Data is like crude oil. And until you mine that data, there's no value in it. So we ensure our platform is optimized for analytics. And then we work with that software ecosystem to optimize that solution. You've seen the work we do with companies like Cloudera and Hadoop and others to optimize those solutions on top of our platform. Now that you have this data center, you need to ensure that you take full advantage of the finite resources you have. Ensure that you're delivering the best capabilities to your customers with the resources available. And that's why orchestration is so important. And that's where I'm going to jump off today on the software-defined infrastructure necessary to do that. Let's talk about the opportunity there is for everyone in this room. We've heard the projections many times. 50 billion connected devices by 2020. 50 billion connected devices. We've also heard that the, the amount of data available is going to be enormous. The projections continue to grow. It's already at 44 zettabytes of data by 2020. That data I talked about that needs to be mined and value extracted, where does that value go to? It goes to an opportunity to drive revenue. And the service economy projections have continued to grow 
and are at $450 billion projection by 2020. That's going to drive the need for more devices to be consuming that value, which in turn is going to drive more data, which then in turn drives the explosion around the digital service economy. That is the opportunity. We're already seeing the trends occur in the business today. Businesses are driving the need for agility, performance, and efficiency as they provide that value to their customer. You're seeing this day in and day out. They're already driving to take advantage of this. We see customers like Netflix, Uber, and others driving this capability into the market. And you in the IT space are starting to address these trends. Self-hosted clouds, performance, and efficiency in your data center. You're also addressing the needs of security and compliance. And we're starting to see beyond compute virtualization. We're starting to see network and storage virtualization. So the movement is occurring. And at the foundation of all of this is that dynamic resource pooling. This is what you need to build a modern, efficient data center. You can no longer rely on the legacy approaches, but you need to move forward to a modern, more efficient, more responsive data center, which involves dynamic compute resources. Not only compute, but storage and network. You need to be able to orchestrate that workload. You need to be ensure that that workload goes to the proper operating or compute environment. You be able to manage that to take full advantage efficiently and responsibly for your customer. But more importantly, we need to drive intelligence into this orchestration. We are passionate about driving intelligence into that layer. That intelligence allows a workload to move to the right compute environment. If you understand information about that compute, whether it's the power, the performance, the location, information about that will help you guide where you put that workload. You're not going to have a homogeneous environment. And so you can move workloads to the appropriate compute platform necessary for that workload uh, execution. You also know that it's a dynamic environment. So getting telemetry information, status about that data center, helps you better manage and move compute resources around your network. And so if you try to manage a workload in a certain geography, knowing where it's at, where that workstation's at, will help you move the workload to the proper place. If the thermals get out of control in one area, you can offload it and balance it across the other part of your data center. We call this the software-defined infrastructure. And for the open software-defined infrastructure, at the heart of that is OpenStack. OpenStack is gaining tremendous momentum. We have over 25,000 members already in OpenStack. Well over 519 companies have already participating. We're starting to see deployments happening. And this is not deployments in small companies. These are deployments in Fortune 100 companies. BMW, Disney, Walmart, and others are deploying OpenStack into their environment. So we're seeing it go mainstream. Now we're seeing a tremendous innovation happening, rapid innovation. Paul talked about what open source drives. It drives rapid innovation, and we're seeing that. We have over 1,300 contributors driving capabilities into OpenStack today. Just in the release in April, Kilo release, we saw over 400 new features deployed. The pace of innovation is moving in the space. So how do we harness that effort? There's lots of innovation going on. We need to harness that to ensure that we focus on the right capabilities in OpenStack to drive the readiness. That's where the OpenStack Foundation comes in, driving working groups. Intel has been very, very active in helping drive and establish these working groups. We're participating in many of the working groups. Four that I want to bring up are the Enterprise OpenStack Working Group, focusing on the objections or the barriers or the inhibitors in the enterprise of deploying OpenStack. And I'll talk a bit more about that toward the end. On the Telco OpenStack Working Group, ensuring that we meet the needs of the telco industry. You all remember what we did in carrier-grade Linux. 
where we built up a carrier grade Linux capability, we're doing the similar thing in the Telco Working Group, ensuring that we address the needs and the requirements of Etsy and putting capabilities like OPNFV into the Telco capabilities. We know that the future continues to evolve. We know that we're going to continue to grow and strengthen OpenStack. We know that the requirements are going to continue to come in. But we have to maintain focus. And that's what the product working group is about, to ensure that we establish the right priorities, get the right resources applied, and get the right energy innovating and building to strengthen the OpenStack capability. And then finally, in the latest working group established, I'm very proud of, Intel is very committed to inclusion. So the diversity working group is just that. It's designed to ensure that we have inclusion and diverse viewpoints and a safe place to drive that capability into the industry. We've done many studies at Intel, and we know for a fact that this is, makes good business sense. It's often coined as the right thing to do, and it is. But it's more than that. It makes great business sense to have a diverse workforce working on solutions you drive more profitability for your business by doing this because you come up with better solutions. We are one of the top 10 contributors to OpenStack today. We're focusing on projects that help us drive the readiness, whether it's higher availability for the enterprise, which is so critical, higher performance and reliable performance, which I talked about in that scheduler to ensure that that workload goes to the right and most performant environment. Better efficiency. Again, you have finite resources. You need to ensure that you efficiently deploy those workloads in your environment. And so in having that right capability in the scheduling environment is critical. Moving forward, the next generation of networking, like NFV, is critical for this environment and software-defined networking. And then stronger security and compliance. As policies and regulators get involved, whether it's from an industry like the health industry, whether it's governments or your own IT business that has regulations and policies and compliance, we're ensuring we're meeting the needs of all of those. There's also other efforts going on. We've all heard about containers. Containers are moving very, very quickly. There's two challenges that needed to be addressed. One was just the compliance and compatibility. Everybody should have seen the announcement. Intel is a founding member of the Open Container Project designed to provide a common, compatible container format to allow that innovation to thrive. When you get that commonality, innovation will drive the capabilities in the containers. Another big concern around containers has been security. So at Intel, we're being active in finding ways to help secure container-type usage models. One of the things we're doing is tying that to our virtualization technology already built into our platforms. We're already showing proof of concept of running a lightweight VM on our platform, giving you that security that you expect and want, but also giving the responsiveness. We're able to boot that environment in around 150 milliseconds, which is very consistent with the container technology. So we're driving performance, but getting the value of the tie to hardware security, giving you more value to you to be able to deploy container type technology usages. We're also looking at how we secure and better provide security capabilities, tying the host kernel to our hardware. And so we just open sourced in May our, oops, let me move forward, our Intel kernel guard technology. The Intel kernel guard technology is designed to tie to our virtualization technology better securing the host operating environment. And that was open sourced in May. And then one more area we're focusing on is the Intel Cloud Integrity Technology, using attestation to secure an environment. Using our Intel Trusted Execution Technology that's built into our hardware, we're now able to create a trusted environment all the way from the boot through the operating system up to the workload. We just recently demonstrated this securing a container environment using this capability. In a traditional way that Intel works, we're driving all this stuff upstream. We're ensuring that the upstream capabilities get incorporated into the ecosystem. So we're driving capabilities upstream, and then we're working with the ecosystem to adopt these technologies and deliver them to the market. 
Speaking of adoption, doing things upstream is critical. Doing things the right way in the Linux operating environment is critical. Doing this, uh, the right things in OpenStack is critical. But we also need to drive adoption. And that's why two years ago, we started working with Red Hat on the OnRamp program, OnRamp to Enterprise OpenStack. In this program, we worked on things like hands-on training, where we had workshops for IT managers to understand how to deploy OpenStack capabilities. We gave them access to labs to look at their workloads and deploy those workloads to see how they would operate. We let them build out POCs to see what workloads would be the best for their environment. And then we went to scale this program with system integrators and bars to ensure that we gave everybody an opportunity to participate. The program went so well that we've decided today to extend that program to add in engineering framework. Now remember I talked about the enterprise working group. The engineering framework is really focused on requirements coming out of the enterprise OpenStack working group, focusing on ease of deployment, high availability of tenants and services, and rolling upgrades. These are the most critical aspects of OpenStack that need to be solved. And so our focus and effort from Intel is on those elements to ensure we drive that capability. Working with Red Hat to drive this in, into their release of OpenStack, Intel uh, or, uh, Red Hat Enterprise OpenStack. So together, we're going to drive this capability so we accelerate the adoption of OpenStack. So Intel and Red Hat are working very close. Yeah, that graphic looks kind of rude, actually, now that I see it on stage. <laughs> <laughs> we did a build last night. Uh, that's what you did to me, Paul, when I finished today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, let's build it. It's like concentration. What's the rest of the picture? All right, so Intel and Red Hat together <laughs> uh, is not enough. We need to work with the ecosystem, the OEMs. I'm very pleased to say that Cisco and Dell have both agreed to participate in building out the full solution to help accelerate adoption, combining all of our experience, simplifying that adoption process, and giving you more confidence to deploy these capabilities into your environment. You'll hear more from Cisco and Dell going forward about the programs that they're putting into place to help drive the on-ramp capabilities. So I'm very, very pleased about the cooperation we have with Red Hat and with our OEM partners to make this possible. So it really is for the businesses. It's about seizing that opportunity. You heard earlier Paul say, and I totally agree, that the businesses are transitioning. There are traditional businesses, but the IT environment, you're becoming a business as well. And you need to seize that opportunity, seize that service economy. Developers in the room, all you guys developing, we need to continue to focus on the most high priority items to drive readiness. Drive that readiness of OpenStack so the deployments continue to grow. And then the data center, you need to embrace, participate in on-ramp, make sure that you guys are actively involved in deploying these capabilities. There's companies out there, probably your competition already doing this, you need to ensure you embrace that as well. So in conclusion, uh, I want to make sure that you guys know that we are giving away a Dell Venue 8 uh, tablet. It has uh, 3D technology in it, RealSense technology, allowing you to take 3D pictures, which is really cool. All you have to do is tweet or Instagram hashtag Intel at RHS with your selfie. Paul and I have already done this, so we're <laughs> now on your chair is the light up. You have to put that on, put the light up around your neck or your wrist, take a selfie and fire it off there and have a chance to win today and tomorrow a Dell Venue 8 tablet. All right, so in conclusion, our partnership with Red Hat continues to grow. We continue to build that strong relationship on things like OpenStack and lighting up the software-defined infrastructure. Everyone in this room is participating in that, whether you're in the business, whether you're in IT or whether you're a developer, we all have to work together to make this possible. So let's go forward, let's light it up, and let's make software-defined infrastructure the wave of the future. Thank you.